In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The souls of the saints are rejoicing in heaven, the saints who follow the footsteps of Christ. And since for love of him they shed their blood, they now exult with Christ forever. My dear friends, we celebrate today the Feast of the Martyrs, the first martyrs of the city of Rome. So these were the martyrs under the persecution of Nero in the first century. To better celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who consecrated the abundant first fruits of the Roman Church by the blood of the martyrs, grant, we pray, that with firm courage we may together draw strength from so great a struggle and ever rejoice at the triumph of faithful love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this word, O children of Israel, that the Lord pronounces over you, over the whole family that I brought up from the land of Egypt. You alone have I favored, more than all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your crimes. Do two walk together unless they have agreed? Does a lion roar in the forest when it has no prey? Does a young lion cry out from its den unless it has seized something? Has a bird brought to earth by a snare when there is no lure for it? Does a snare spring up from the ground without catching anything? If the trumpet sounds in a city, will the people not be frightened? If evil befalls a city, has not the Lord caused it? Indeed, the Lord God does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. The lion roars, who will not be afraid? Lord God speaks, who will not prophesy. I brought upon you such upheaval as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. You were like a brand plucked from the fire. Yet you return not to me, says the Lord. So now I will deal with you in my own way, O Israel. And since I will deal thus with you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lead me in your justice, Lord. Lead me in your justice, Lord. At dawn I bring my plea expectantly before you. For you, O God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. Lead me in your justice, Lord. You hate all evildoers. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful the Lord abhors. Lead me in your justice, Lord. But I, because of your abundant mercy, will enter your house. I will worship at your holy temple in fear of you, O Lord. Lead me in your justice, Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. As Jesus got into a boat, his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a violent storm came up on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by waves, but he was asleep. They came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. He said to them, why are you terrified, O oh, you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. The men were amazed and said, What sort of man is this, whom even the winds and the sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, today we have a very familiar story, the story of Jesus calming the storm. Um, and of course, we, we look at this at the metaphoric level for us, at least today. Uh, we recognize that uh, we are all symbolically in a boat, so we just call it life. Um, and sometimes the sea of life is great, and it's sunny, and you can go fishing, and you're getting a good tan, and life is great. Uh, but then sometimes, absolutely, life is not great. And there are sometimes little waves, and then there's really big waves, and there's sometimes there's little storms, and sometimes really, really big storms. Our narrative today, there's a really, really big storm. The text even uses the word violent to describe it. Uh, you can imagine what these people in the boat, they're fishermen, very familiar with storms on the sea, and they themselves are very upset and very concerned to the point that they're waking up Jesus saying, we are perishing in the present progressive. Uh, that right now we are dying. Uh, real concern, real concern for them. Uh, and Jesus wakes up and rebukes the storm and it calms down and things are great again. Um, so uh, what are those storms in our lives? You don't have to think very far. Um, struggles of life, struggles in family, struggles at work, uh, struggles within oneself, uh, a giant pandemic taking place surrounding us, uh, racial violence, riots in the streets, all of this, of these storms uh, that, are, are, that are rocking our boat, uh, moving it back and forth. Um, and, but th what's nice about this boat is uh, Jesus is in the boat as well. Um, and it's our reliance on him that saves us. Uh, they go, Lord, Kyrie, save us, Eleison, uh, we are perishing, we're, we're sinking, save us. And he does. It's Jesus' actions that bring calm, that bring peace back to the lives of these fishermen, his disciples. Uh, and the people are just utterly confused as to who he is. Um, depending on your gospel version of this, Mark is a little... A little bit, little. He gives a little bit more going on here than Matthew. Um, there's, there's, there's a sense of what is my relationship with the person of Jesus, this guy in my boat. What is that relationship? Um, Jesus here is fine. He's doing great. I mean, it's a storm outside, but he's asleep. He's, he's, he's great. Leave him alone. Um, but the disciples, they're not so great. They're, they're, they're concerned. They really think they're about to die. Again, it goes back to that relationship. What do we think of that relationship? What is the foundation of that relationship? Um, in Mark's gospel, Jesus actually rebukes the disciples for not having faith. Here the rebuke is just kind of little. Where's your faith? You have little faith, little faith. Um, I think a good way of, trust, of translating that word of faith here is simply trust. Um, trust of the person of Jesus. Is Jesus for me or is he not for me? Is Jesus going to take care of me? Is he not going to take care of me? Is Jesus close to me or is he far away? Is Jesus active in my life or is he really asleep? That's, these are real fundamental decisions that each one of us has to make about our relationship with the person of Jesus. Um, I'm not going to say that trust is easy, and it's not. As one who, who doesn't really like trusting other people, um, that's really hard to do. And for the disciples now to be able to trust Jesus uh, uh, is difficult. Um, I think, though, it's not... God is God. Jesus is Jesus. Jesus doesn't have to earn our trust, quite frank, quite frankly. He's God. Um, but we're not gods. We're humans. And for us, people really do have to earn our trust before we can place it. And I think God understands that really well. Um, we're, we're in chapter 8 of Matthew. I mean, we've had chapters and chapters of understanding who Jesus is, coming to recognize who he is in the lives of his disciples. What is that relationship? Um, and each one of us are, maybe we're in chapter 8 of our life, maybe we're in chapter 23, maybe we're further along in the chapters, I don't know, of our own gospel story of our relationship with Jesus. But all along that path, uh, the seas when they're good, the seas when they're rough, all along our stories, um, is the evidence, the testimony, the witness to God's faithfulness and his trustworthiness. Um, I don't have to go so far to know that God is trustworthy. Um, that takes a little bit. That takes a little bit. I'm not going to deny that. And sometimes we do have to look at other people's lives and how God's interacted in their life before we can say, okay, okay, I'll give God, give God a break. I'll give God a benefit of the doubt here. Um, but I can just look at my own life as witness and evidence um, to what God has done in my life. I recognize if he's taking care of me in the little storms, he's probably going to take care of me in the big storms. That those foundations, those steps, those rocks of trust are already there. Again, that's why that, that role of the examine becomes so crucial, so important. How has God interacted? How has God dealt in my life? What has he been doing already? 
So I can go back to those moments over and over again, go back to those places of memory. Like, I often think of memory as like these moments of crystallized grace. Uh, you go back to these moments of memory of, oh yeah, he did take care of me then. Why wouldn't he take care of me again? On God's terms, not my terms, but on God's terms. And it's in those moments of reflection, it's in those moments of returning to those memories, it's in those moments of my life, it's not my own witness, my own evidence, my own testimony to God's faithfulness. That when the storms do come, they do come, and we're in one now, we just are. Um, we can rely on Jesus and know that he's going to calm it the way he wants to, when he wants to, and that we're going to be okay. Jesus, what sort of man is this? He's one who can calm the seas. He's one who can bring peace to my own life. Stand now and bring our prayers and petitions before our loving God. Let's pray for the church around the world. Uh, let's pray for, particularly for those who are suffering persecution in whatever way that might look like. Uh, that the Lord may send his strength, his fortitude into their lives to be good witnesses of the Christian life. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for all those who are affected by illness and sickness, particularly COVID-19. Uh, that the Lord may be close to them. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let's pray for all our officials, our, all our leaders who are making important decisions, uh, that the Lord may give them a spirit of wisdom and understanding to help guide us in these days. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for peace in our world, uh, peace from the virus, peace from injustice. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray for? I to pray for a spirit of openness and understanding to overcome all that divides us, polarizes us, in this nation especially, for this let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all the intentions found in our book of prayers and intentions. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers we hold silently within our hearts. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we are confident that you hear us always because you love us and because we ask in the powerful name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Forth your goodness we have this bread to offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for with your goodness we have this wine to offer you. For to the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Receive, Holy Father, the offering we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle the victory is yours, through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. May Chloe, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Samuel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. I invite those who are watching at home to use this time of quiet to make your own spiritual communion, acknowledging your faith in the person of Jesus and your desire to be one with him. Let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mysteries of the cross, graciously grant that, drawing strength from this, from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.